after the release of Heart of Thorns in 2015, I have been captivated by the Tempest. It can do an insane amount of damage, it can be a solid support and it has decent survivability. And best of all, I can do all of this while sitting in the back of my chair. When I'm doing the story, open world defense or a collection, I want a bit of everything. And this build suits that playstyle. I don't want to do a lot of damage, I just want to get through the content with ease. This build isn't a hidden gem or anything, but I'd like to share it with you guys nonetheless. Before we head into the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe for more Guild Wars 2 content, it helps the channel a lot. It's me Kyo, and let's head into the build. Oh, and if you want to play the build right away, you can find the build template in the video description. But first, why did I choose Tempest? What's wrong with the core elementalist or the weaver? And what about the catalyst, the new end of dragons elite specialization? I chose the Tempest because it offers an extra mechanic that the core elementalist does not have. The mechanic I'm talking about is the overload mechanic. If you stay in one attunement for a couple of seconds, you'll be able to overload it. This deals damage to your enemies or heals your allies. In some cases, it leaves a field that you can combo your skills in. This can result in a buff, a burst of healing or an aura. Next to that, the overload skills also break stun. So if you happen to get stunned, you can easily escape by overloading an attunement. Overloading is a core mechanic of the Tempest, so you don't need any additional traits to use it. Overloads can be buffed by traits though, but we'll discuss that later in the video. And why don't you play Weaver? I really like to play Weaver in endgame content like Fractals and Raids. However, the Weaver requires you to focus a lot on your skill rotation. This does not really fit the late back playstyle I'm aiming for. Also, Weaver is really good at one thing, dealing a lot of damage. It just lacks a bit of support in my opinion. The Catalyst is also a solid option, it gives you the opportunity to be more tanky. However, for the Catalyst you still have to focus a lot on your Jade Sphere. And also, you'll have to time your hammer skill 3 if you decide to use a hammer. A good option, but still, it's not the laid back playstyle I'm looking for. So I settled with Tempest. The Tempest comes with the Heart of Thorns expansion, so keep in mind that if you want to play this build, you'll need the expansion package. Let's start with the traits of the build. Maybe it's not the most interesting part of the build, but it's the foundation that the build works on. As you can see right here, there is no fire trait line. Although this is a very common trait line for the Elementalist, it does not synergize well with this build. The fire trait line heavily relies on you having auras, having might and fire fields you create. This build doesn't really do that, so so water is a more solid option here. In the water trait line we focus on our defenses and applying vulnerability. Vulnerability is great because this condition causes enemies to take more damage from our attacks. In the water trait line we're going for piercing shards since we're going to apply a lot of vulnerability. We apply vulnerability with the glyph of storms, overload air, lightning orb and shatterstone. For the next trait we use flow like water. It's a nice increase in damage whenever you start a fight and don't lose too much health. For the grandmaster trait we choose soothing water. This boosts the soothing mist trait that we get when we are in water attunement. This passively heals me and nearby allies. The other Grandmaster traits in water aren't that important since they are mainly focused on supporting allies. And we're most likely to play solo a lot. Now let's check out the air trait line. Here we try to get the most out of our critical hits. We choose ferocious winds first. This increases our ferocity based on our precision. Since we are either running berserker or marauder's gear, I'll get to this later in the video, we enhance our critical strike damage because we already have a good critical hit chance. The next trait we choose is raging storm. This further amplifies our chance to critically hit. You see where this is going, right? We're trying to get as much out of a critical hit as possible. For the next trait, fresh air. Fresh air is the bread and butter of this build. This is what the build heavily relies on. You will see this on your screen right now. Every time we land a critical hit, our air attunement gets recharged. We can tap back into air, do a little bit of damage and then we can overload again. This air overload deals a lot of damage, applies vulnerability and delivers a lightning strike on our next attack. More about this can be found in the rotation part of this video. Now let's have a look at the Tempest trait line. Here we will buff our overloads. First trait is Eye of the Storm. This is a stun break that activates automatically whenever you get stunned. Keep in mind that this trait has a 40 second cooldown. Since we already have a lot of stun breaks, you can choose another trait if you like. For example, you can use Unstable Conduit. This gives you an aura whenever you use an overload. This can be used either defensive or offensive. Next one is Harmonious Conduit, a great trait that gives us the ability whenever we start an overload. You gain the most benefits from an overload when it's fully finished. This trait prevents you getting 
getting knocked down or interrupted whenever you are channeling your overload. Transcendent Tempest is your Grandmaster trait. This trait reduces the time you need to start channeling an overload whenever you switch attunements. The cooldown goes from about 6 seconds to 4 seconds. Although this does sound like a minor difference, it's a lot when you are actually playing this build. Also, when we finish an overload, this trait also increases our damage. Now, what weapons do we use for this build? The most laid back weapon you can use for an elementalist is a staff. However, we are not using the staff for this build. Instead, we use a combination of the scepter and the warhorn. The scepter is accessible for all elementalist builds. The warhorn can only be used by the tempest. The reason we choose the scepter here is because it's a good mid-range damage option for the tempest. This also has synergy with the overloads of the tempest. The overloads are also cast in mid or melee range. Dagger would also be a good option to get in range for the overloads. However, the dagger is mainly focused on dealing damage. And also, you lose the possibility to blind in earth and air attunement. When you are doing a big dynamic event, the scepter is a safer option. You are not face tanking all the damage, but instead you are effective at a safer distance. Before we head into the rotation, let's go over the utility skills and why I chose them. Don't worry, I won't make this overly long. For the healing skill, I chose Glyph of Elemental Harmony. I chose the Glyph for its burst heal. Of all the healing skills that the Tempest has, the Glyph of Elemental Harmony has the biggest instant heal. It also grants a boon based on your attunement whenever you heal. So if you are in water attunement, you can heal even more because the Glyph gives you the regeneration buff. The next skill is a Signet of Fire. You never have to touch this skill. Its passive effect increases the critical hit chance. And we need that, and I'll tell you why later in the video. If you are not planning to do a lot of damage and are afraid of dying, you can take Lightning Flash instead. This allows you to teleport a short distance, but honestly, I don't think you'll need it because we have other defensive traits and skills. The next skill is Glyph of Storms. This skill is a jack of all traits. This glyph summons a storm based on your attunement. And this also applies an effect or condition to your enemies based on your attunement. You mainly want to use this skill while in air attunement. This rapidly applies vulnerability to enemies in the storm. And this condition increases the damage you do to your enemies. If you want to slow down your enemies, you can use it in water attunement. This applies chill to the affected targets. Another great use of this skill is an earth attunement. If you have a number of enemies attacking you in melee range, you can summon the sandstorm. The sandstorm applies blindness to your enemies. This prevents them from damaging you while you can heal up or kill them. I would not replace this skill. It really excels in every situation. Before we go to the elite skill, let's take a look at Arcane Shield. This skill blocks the next three incoming attacks and explodes after the third attack. It does not do a ton of damage but it really helps you if you are low on health or if you screwed something up. This skill also breaks stun, which comes in handy whenever you can't overload your attunements yet. This skill is also great whenever you quickly want to gather something and there are enemies attacking you. If you use this skill and you don't take any damage, the game states that you are not in combat. So before your shield breaks, you can gather and quickly mount up again. This saves you some trouble and it does not require you to kill the mobs. If you don't think you need this skill, you can replace it with a temp Shout, Lightning Flash, or another skill to your liking. Your elite skill is Glyph of Elementals. This lets you summon an elemental based on your attunement. Once again, this skill is a jack of all trades. It can be used based on your current combat situation. You want to deal more damage? Summon a Fire Elemental. You need a stun or break a break bar? Summon an Air Elemental and use its active skill. Protection or healing? Use Earth or a Water Elemental. I also use this because in some cases the elementals will catch some of the aggro for you. This relieves the pressure from you and directs it to the elemental. If you are not into this, you can always go for mobility or DPS. Your option would be the Fiery Greatsword. Skill 3 on the Fiery Greatsword can be used situationally to get in or out of a fight. Skill 4 is used to deal damage and dash in or out of a fight. Skill 5 creates a firestorm that does a good amount of damage. In most cases, you want to go for Glyph of Elementals for the most laid back gaming experience. Now, how should you be using these skills? What is the rotation of this build? Well, there is not a real rotation. There is a prioritization. Because this build refreshes the air attunement with each critical hit, it's important to tap in and out of air all the time. And since the fire attunement has its cooldowns too, we can't just switch between fire and air all the time. Well, you can, but then you'll be auto-attacking half of the time. 
So let's get into that. Start off with air attunement and use your lightning orb. The orb is slow, but it does a good amount of damage. It also shoots small projectiles that damages other enemies. If your enemy has a break bar or you're fighting a number of enemies, also use Cyclone. This damages the break bar of the enemy or can be used to pull enemies together. Then use Overload Air and let it channel. While channeling, you can use skill 2 for some instant damage and skill 3 for blind. Both of these skills have no casting time, so you can use these skills whenever you are overloading or auto attacking. Now move to Fire Attunement and use your Dragon's Tooth, then use Wildfire skill 5 quickly after that. This this ensures that the Dragon's Tooth triggers a Blast Finisher, and this grants you a bit of might. Then use Phoenix right after that, this grants you even more might, if you use it in the Wildfire field. Now let's go back to Air. Use your Lightning Storm, Orb and skills 2 and 3 again, then Overload. Now we don't want to go back to Fire again, we want to go to Water and cast Shatterstone, skill 2. Then we go back to Fire, cast another Dragon's Tooth and then we switch back to Air. Use skills 2 and 3 and the Orb again if possible, and then, you guessed it, Overload again. Then we switch back to Earth and cast Dust Storm and Sand Squall. If you are under pressure, you can go to Earth for the blind of the Dust Storm. Use Sand Squall for a magnetic aura to reflect projectiles. If you use Sand Squall in a field, then it will also trigger a combo finisher. More about combos and fields can be found in my combat guide. Check it out in the info charts. Anyway, tap back into air and use the skills as before. Does it sound hard? Yes? Don't worry, it isn't. There is just one rule really. Once you have overloaded air, go to another attunement, use your skills and go back to air. The only exception happens when you switch to water. You can go to fire after water to cast an extra dragon's tooth, but you don't really have to. This is just my preference. I usually try to maintain this attunement rotation. Air, fire, air, water, air, earth and repeat. And you only really want to use the Glyph of Storms in air attunement for maximum damage. You can use it situationally in earth attunement to blind enemies, but you only want to do this if you are under heavy pressure. This rotation does about 10 to 15k damage without boons. This is a realistic expectation if you're playing alone. If you have all the boons and you're using food, you can easily do between 23 and 28k damage. This is somewhat realistic if you're fighting a world boss. Now, what gear do we use for this build? I am using Marauders gear. This is basically a Berserker light stat combination. We drop the power and ferocity from the Berserker a little bit and put that into vitality. This gives us some extra health in open world PvE situations. I'm also using Runes of the Scholar for this build. The Scholar runes boost my damage output and increase my critical hit chance. These are pretty expensive, but that's because I'm also using them for raiding and fractals. There are some good alternative runes for this build though. Take for example the Rune of the Pack. These runes don't really increase your damage output but give you more chance to crit or crit even higher. If you are planning to play defensive or just basic mob grinding, consider using the rune of vampirism. These runes don't really boost your crits but they do give you power and health. And whenever you kill a foe, you will regain some health. This rune would be my favorite if I wasn't running Scholar runes. On my Scepter and Warhorn, I'm using the Sigil of Fire and the Sigil of Air. These sigils both trigger an attack whenever I crit and has a 5 second cooldown. That's a free passive attack without you doing anything. For the trinkets and the backpack, you can use Berserker stats. You can also use Marauder trinkets if you have them, but I prefer Berserker for that extra bit of damage. And there you have it, that's the lazy tank best build that I basically use everywhere in PvE. Don't forget to give this video a like and share it with your guildies, it helps so much more than you think. Leave your questions in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!